Hi, I'm Stephen David Horwich, and I'd like to share with you some information on our upper school program. Our upper school program is for students ages 11 to adult. It presumes that the student is already fairly literate. It's not for students who are really struggling with literacy. That said, we have had students who didn't read very well who got through the program, and of course the program forced them to read better and they improved. Uh, and the way that the courses are designed and the lesson plans are designed, your students' reading and literacy and vocabulary are bound to improve to some extent. Uh, the upper school program is intended to take three to four years of school. The average school year being about 180 days. Uh, we expect the student to be doing school, these particular courses, for about four to five hours every school day. Uh, the program includes educational basics courses, which I'll explain, history courses, science courses, creative writing courses, and many, many electives to interest your student and, uh, and make the experience of their education far more vital and fun for them. Uh, I'd like to explain each area briefly, but we do have separate videos on our site that explain each area of upper school curricula, and I hope you're going to go take a look at some of those and learn a little bit more about them. One thing I do want to tell you is that our upper school curriculum is pretty well self-contained, uh, that uh, uh, the uh, reading materials are, are very often contained within the course, but there are secondary materials that you will have to get for specific courses. Some courses use other textbooks, some courses use film that is not available on the internet that you're going to have to go out and find. There are movies that are not very hard to find, but you will need them to really fully have the student experience that particular course. I'll try and give you a better sense of that in the other videos as we go through individual courses. First of all, your student would start with educational basics courses, uh, of which there are several that we ask the student complete before the students start history, science, creative writing, and the other core curricula. Uh, the first course that we ask a student to do is a free course. You can download it from our site for free. It's called How to Do Connect the Thoughts. It demonstrates to the student the, the methodology that we use in all of our courses and in every lesson plan, even as the student is using that methodology. It's very short. It only takes hours to a day or two to do for the student and it will really help set them up uh, for the, the new kind of educational approach that they're entering into now. The next course we ask the student to do is called Information Right or Wrong. This is our best-selling course. It's a brief course and it helps the student to define in his own mind the difference in the materials he's studying and in life between the truth, an opinion, and an untruth or a lie. Now this is a critical life skill that all of us need to develop, obviously, and when you're studying materials at this level, the student really has to be good at spotting the difference for his own purposes. We want the student to decide for himself as he goes through his studies what's true, what's not true, and what's valuable to him. That's a very big part of what Connect the Thoughts tries to do in empowering the student. So this course is a must. The third course we ask the student to do is Upper School How to Do Research. This is also a very critical course that we ask the student to complete before he starts any of the other core materials. Upper School Research is very comprehensive. It offers many, many tools that the lower school course doesn't offer on how to research and really find the materials and the information that you need in order to understand your studies. It's a really critical course. A lot of adults could benefit from it. A lot of adults have done it. And we really ask that every student in upper school do it as their third course. Another course that we offer that is not required but we recommend it is You or Them Control Over Your Life. This is done after information right or wrong. And it's a course that takes much farther the, uh, what the environment does around us in this civilization to attempt to control and limit us. Uh, it, it deals with things like television, the media, drug use, all kinds of things, games, video games, that uh, can manipulate and control the student and really change his life for the worse. 
and really spells out for the student what these things are about and how they attempt to control the student. We recommend this course very highly after information right or wrong and after upper school how to do research. There is a fifth course that uh, we use in Educational Basics. It's a computer course on how to use a computer. I really doubt your student's going to need it. If your student is at all computer literate, I wouldn't waste any time with it. But if your student has never turned on a computer, it's a good course to get the student through and, and to acclimate them to the computer. After the student has completed these Educational Basics courses, we move into the core curriculum, history, science, creative writing, and any electives that the student would like to do. Uh, our history program in upper school consists of 11 very large courses. They are significant courses. Upper school is intended to take between four to five years, and the history courses are the core of it. History in upper school is very much a linear and integrated affair. Now what I mean by that is that our history courses, history is presented in a linear fashion on the timeline. Everything in history is presented in the sequence that it occurred. Uh, we do this so that the student is never lost in history. We don't jump back and forth uh, in terms of subject matter. We keep things located in time. So the first history course is prehistory. Now, Connect the Thoughts is a secular curriculum. And our prehistory course deals with all the ideas in science and even in religion about what happened before civilization started. Many religious ideas are looked at as a part of their study of history in the prehistory course. I believe we look at 11 different religions and their ideas of what happened prior to civilization starting about 6,000 years ago. Uh, if you're looking for a course that doesn't deal with any ideas at all prior to 6,000 years ago, then uh, you should skip prehistory and start with our History 2 course, which is Early Civilizations. If, however, you're looking for a secular curriculum that covers history in a creative and adventurous way, I really recommend the prehistory course. It really acclimates the student to the idea of what history is and all of the different and creative ways it can be approached as a subject. After prehistory, the student starts a very long course called Early Civilizations. It covers five very large civilizations, and that sets the student off studying civilization after civilization. The third course covers Greece, fourth course covers Rome, fifth course covers the medieval period and the birth of Islam. Uh, of course, the fourth course in Rome covers the birth of Christianity. The third course, which is covering early civilizations, the birth of Buddhism, Judaism, and Hinduism. The major religions are covered very, very completely in our history courses. They are a very important part of history and a very important part of our lives today. We want the student to really understand religion, really understand the major religions, not to be afraid of them, to be able to deal with them as he proceeds through his life. We cover the history of these religions, we cover their current practice, we cover the, uh, the stories contained within those religions. We really cover them very thoroughly, in some cases for weeks at a time uh, for each given religion. But we cover history as an integrated affair where religion, politics, science, geography, all kinds of subjects are covered as they occur on the timeline. We want the student to understand that history is life, and that we experience life and all of these subjects as an integrated affair. That is how we experience life. We don't separate in life politics from religion from anything else, so geography. These are all things that we experience as a unified experience life. And that's how we present history as Will Durant suggests that it be taught. Will Durant, of course, was America's greatest historian. Uh, the last two courses out of the 11 in history are not so much history courses as sociology courses. They discuss the value of history to life today and what we can do with what we've learned in order to improve life and for ourselves and for the people around us. These are very important courses and they're really the payoff of three to four years of study of history, serious study. A student is going to study history in upper school every single day for about an hour. It's a very serious course of study. We offer eight science courses, and our science is strictly secular science. There is no faith-based science offered in Connect the Thoughts. 
Uh, the eight courses are intended to be done over a four-year period, two courses per year, essentially one per semester. It starts with a science basics course, which explains what science is and what the tools of science are, and then it moves through uh, all of the various important sciences. Uh, that science basics course for upper school, by the way, is more complete and comprehensive than the science basics course in lower school. It covers some of the same materials, but then it goes into far more detail on what science is. Uh, so your student will be doing science twice a week uh, to three times a week, depending on the student, for an hour each time they do science. Uh, and that's for four years. The last science course is a science projects course where the uh, student gets to select what kind of science project he liked to do and then develops it along certain guided steps the course provides. The other part of our core curriculum for upper school is creative writing. There are five creative writing courses. For upper school we recommend that the student, if he hasn't done it in lower school, do creative writing one, which explains what writing is and some of the essentials. But we also suggest that the students skip Creative Writing 2 for upper school. Creative Writing 2 is really geared for lower, uh, lower school students or younger students who are struggling for uh, ideas. They're, they're having a hard time coming up with ideas. Creative Writing 2 helps them develop ideas and uh, locate within themselves where those ideas come from. Now, if you are an older student or an adult, and you struggle to come up with ideas, Creative Writing 2 is fine for you. You should do it. But if your student is good at coming up with ideas, that student really doesn't need Creative Writing 2 and should skip from 1 to 3. If they did Creative Writing 1 in lower school, they should start with lower, uh, Creative Writing 3 in upper school. 3, 4, and 5 get into all of the enormous details and techniques of writing all of the particulars of a really well-written story. Creative Writing 3 and 4 in particular deal with this issue and are long and incredibly creative courses where the student does massive amounts of writing and masters many skills. Creative Writing 5 is essentially a review of professional writing and the ways a student could make a living as a professional writer. You'll find out a lot more about that course on the Creative Writing page where there's a video where I'll explain it far more. Creative Writing 5 is followed by many master's courses, which are all elective, if the student is interested in continuing on becoming a, a professional writer. Our master's program in writing is intended to create a professional writer in one of various areas of writing. And again, you'll find out much more about that on a video on that page. We have many electives for upper school, and I would rather explain those also on that specific page for electives. But briefly, we have electives in music, electives in animation, electives in acting, many music history electives, and many, many current events electives, which are really, really important to do, and which really open up the world and an understanding of what's going on out there to your student. So that gives you an idea of upper school. Uh, there are a lot more electives. I, I, I don't want to burden you with too much information in one video. So suffice to say, we hope you go look at each of the pages that describe these different kinds of courses. We hope you look at the samples that are available of each course uh, on our site. And we hope you'll consider upper school curriculum for your student. Thank you very much.